On today's episode, we're going to print big, really big, the Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. In a previous video, I showed you how I assembled the CR30, and I did a test print, which was just a block, and it was pretty basic, but now it was time to test this on a bigger scale, something really big. One of the files that I got with the CR30 was this long I-beam. It's a very, very long print, and I wanted to try it out, and it's printing beautifully at this point. And then after it printed for a while, I decided I wanted to try the power loss recovery. So I shut power off and then turned power back on and it clicked in, resume print. So when I click resume print, it started printing again. But when I shut it off, the nozzle actually melted a little spot, which caused a bump. So every time the nozzle hit on that bump for at least the first few layers after, it caused a shift. And you can see it here to the right of the nozzle. There's that shift going on in the I-beam. So that was caused by the bump of the melted nozzle. Well, this was going to be long print, so I decided to install the rollers that I also got with this machine. And to install them, there's two little plastic covers you have to pop off to expose a screw hole. And there's four total screws that hold this in place. There's a short one in front and a long one in back. And that's on each side. A short one in front on the other side and a long one in back. So I hand tighten these at first. And then I finish tightening them with a screwdriver with an Allen wrench bit. Once I got all those tight, I was ready to let this thing run. I let it run, but after a while I noticed it had stopped printing. Well, it turns out the filament runout sensor was working. It paused the printer. This small spool of filament had run out, and it said filament change. So I clicked the button to heat it back up, and that allowed me to pull out the existing filament from the Bowden tube. And then I switched to red Filament Friday filament and fed that in. And then clicked the button and got this thing printing again. And it went really, really smooth. And here's a picture of it transitioning from the white to the red. It doesn't look bad at all. After a while, I got to the rollers, but I noticed there's a big gap. I could actually fit a screwdriver underneath it. So this may have to be lifted or shimmed up. While that prints further, let me show you some smaller prints. This is the Benchy from the front. Doesn't look bad, but from the back, it's very stringy. A lot of spots where it just doesn't look good. I did print a Chep Cube didn't turn out quite so good. But dimensionally, it was good. In the X direction, 9.8, Y direction, 20.5, and the Z direction, 19.9. Overall, I really like this thing. I'm having fun with it. Now, this is a long print. I think this is uh, like 19 hours of print time. And I have shut it off. I didn't run it at night. And, and then the next morning would start it up again. That's why I had several points in this where I restarted it. Power off, power on. But it's, it's handling it pretty well. If I would just let this run continuous, it would probably be you know, almost done. But this is really only halfway. <laughs> so this print, which I got from uh, pre-sliced from Naomi, is only halfway. So this thing is going to be long when it's done. But I can see where this can be very handy for bigger prints. Now as far as smaller prints, print mill, the price of this guy, about $800, I can get four of these Ender 3s. So that's four printers printing at the same time. So I can do four in the same amount of time this thing can do one. So from that point of view, this is actually a little more efficient to have multiple printers. But you can't do big like this on these printers. So that's to me its biggest advantage. And then now with this roller attachment, which I think is probably going to be about a $150 attachment, somewhere in that range. Um, it really adds stability to it. Though, I'm going to look at shimming this guy because of that gap between the print and the rollers. I'm really going to shim it up so it's more level and uh, supports the print. Because I don't want this thing tipping and maybe lifting the bed and then affecting the back of the print. So, I'm still going to play with it some more. I'm having fun with it. I just want to give you guys an update um, on where it's at. Oh, there is an update on the Kickstarter. It's going to be, I think, November 19th. If you're not in a Kickstarter, I get it, you don't have to, but they're going to discount it. The first uh, 200 I think it is, you can buy this for $538. So I'm actually going to try and grab another one because I'm having fun with this, and I wouldn't mind have two of them printing in parallel, so I can print some big stuff in addition to the little stuff. 
So $538 to me, that's a really good price. Hopefully I can get on there quick enough and grab one of those. But that's it. Um, if you have more questions about this, let me know in the comments below. But so far, I'm pretty impressed with how well it prints big. So if you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos that are popping up. And if nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Fill in the Friday.